when they'd be going back to school after they had the baby, because you mentioned that the parenting was often shared and that the children would be left with the extended families. And so whether this was actually a phenomenon that had been happening before the decree came in, that had, that had then been sort of reduced or, or brought to a halt or whatever. And we also wondered whether in that 39.1% of um, dropouts that were attributed to pregnancy, whether any of those girls might have subsequently re-entered the education system after that, so whether that figure is sort of overstating the number of girls that actually drop out of education. Yes. Um, I think you're raising a very interesting point that has to do with this. Now, one of the claims of my doctoral thesis <laughs> is that actually in-school pregnancy is a symbol for something else. So in these regards, in-school pregnancy has taken this place of uh, rites of passage, for instance, that in areas, in urban areas such as that of Maputo are not as present as they were before. So um, what happens is that when you're pregnant, you change category. You're not a child anymore, you're an adult. So what you are entailed to receive doesn't include education. Education, schooling, is something that has got to do with childhood, is your training for life. But when you're pregnant, you have made a choice. Mm -hmm. And that choice opens a few doors and closes some other doors. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question about re-entry, well, I believe that um, uh, before the decree came about, this is probably um, a very strong perspective to look at it. And I'm sorry I don't have any data, and I'm afraid there isn't any data available about what happened before the decree came into place, um, telling us how many people would actually go back to school. As it stands now, um, I, I had four schools with, with which I worked in my field work, and in two of them, the um, head teacher would tell me, we, we don't mind, after, after she's had the baby, she can come back, but she will still be put in the night course. She's not allowed to go back to the day course because her, her talks, her, you know, things that she values are different to those that her classmates value and we don't want that kind of integration because she's going to encourage other people to get pregnant too. So they, she, she's an adult, she could, needs to go to the adults because they have more things to talk about. <laughs> Is there any other questions? A few more I just would like to go back to the goals of gender equality, if you don't mind. Yeah, so the goal is saying that gender equality empowering women. So I think because of the way of thinking about the decree that the Mozambique education is introducing, I don't think that they've introduced it to, 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 to segregate in the first place. The degree was a step from that goal, which is to not spell them on the school and keep them within the record of uh, enrollment role. So when we have enrollment, 80%, whatever, so whether they enroll in the morning or they enroll at night, they're still part of the enrollment, which we're going to see, what we normally see in the different uh, report, like JMG or whatever. So, that particular goal is within that policy. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. So the problem now, I think, with the MDGs itself as a goal, because the goal itself is quite fluid. Yes. And that would allow different government to, to interpret the goal the way they like. And part of the interpretation is actually resulting in segregating girls in, in Mozambique and, and I'm sure other parts of the world. It's just a comment. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. That's why that's why I was like toying with the idea of presenting the decree in, in, in yeah. terms of a rational outcome. We've got a problem, there's a solution, that was a problem. Yes. Works? No. <laughs> yeah, so the board is re revisiting, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sita. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.